Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'ala habita fillah Continuing on in our study Of Shara Sunnah Bi Imam Al-Muzani Rahmatul Ali Rahmatin Wazia We Reach the portion of the text Where Imam Al-Muzani was explaining the appointed time of death which all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creations in this dunya, in this world, uh, will face. That all of us will face death. And that is from the creed of Ahl Sunnati well, Jama'a and all the things that that entails, meaning the life of Al Barzakh, because even these aspects of the religion, which would seem so clear and so apparent and so well known to all of humanity, that they would experience death, that even in this regard, Ahl Bid'ah deviated in aspects in as far as believing in the punishment of the grave and denying the punishment of the grave and various other masail that have to do with uh, the life after death. So Imam al-Muzani rahmatullahi he said, وَخَلْقُ مَيِّتُونَ بِأَجَالِهِمْ إِنْدَ نَفَادِ أَرْزَاقِهِمْ Imam al Mazni Rahmatin Wasia. He said, And the creation die at their appointed times, at their appointed times of death, when their sustenance is depleted and their deeds are cut off. Here, Imam al-Muzni is referring to the fact that no one has the power to resist death. And no one can determine his or her time to die. All of that is with Allah Azza wa Jal. Even if we take asbab, even if we take and make efforts, whether they are successful and the time and the place are all with Eliza with Jim. And every soul will die in accordance with its appointed time. For example, a man may die on his bed. Another may be martyred in the cause of Eliza with Jim. Another may be may die in prayer, in salat. Another may die in one of the places of wickedness, doing wicked and sinful deeds. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how a person will die and when and how they will meet the Lord of the worlds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, في كتاب الكريم, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُوا غَدًا وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ بِأَيْ أَرْضُ تُمُوتُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah, to, in surah uh, Luqman, He says, And you don't know, no soul knows what they will earn tomorrow. Nor does any soul know in which, or, uh, which place they will die? Verily, Allah is al alim. Very Allah is alimun khabir. Very Allah is all knowing, all aware. Subhanahu wa taala. So this shows that the might and the power and the ilm. And the awareness 
and that nothing is hidden from Allah Jal, that this is a part of his divine decree and his ilm, his, uh, his divine decree, his qadr, and it contained in that is his knowledge, his full knowledge of everything. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who destines, and he's the one, tabarak wa ta'ala, who determines when we will die and how we will die and where we will die and how we will meet him, tabarak wa ta'ala. And nothing is hidden from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, Inna Allah la yakhfa alayhi shayun fil ardi wa la fis sama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al-Kareem, that verily, there is nothing that is hidden from Allah in the heaven, in, in the heavens or the earth. So that lets us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full knowledge of everything. The decree returns to him. Our life and our death and our sustenance, as Imam al-Muzani was pointing out, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our rizq, and when it will be cut off. And when our deeds will cease. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitabih al-Kareem Kullu nafsin ba'ikatul mawt wa innama tuwaffuna ajurukum yawm al-qiyamah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitabih al-Kareem in Surah Ali Imran, he tabarak wa ta'ala says, and every soul will taste death. Kullu nafsin da'ikatul mawt. Every soul will taste death. And verily, you will be, uh, they, the, every everyone will be recompensed with their, with their deeds, with what they did. They will receive their reward on the day of judgment, Yom al Qiyamah. So, all of the good you did, you'll receive it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al Adil, He is the most just. And all the sin that you did, it will be apparent and it will come back to you. And that's a part of the justice and hikmah of Allah Azza wa So, as we mention, as the, the Salaf used to mention, that this life, This worldly life has a dar al amal. Well, akhira dar al jaza. That this life is the time for your deeds. And the hereafter is the time you will reap what you sowed in this life, what you did, what you earned in this life. And we hope and pray for Allah's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, fi the jaa ajulaha la yastakhiruna sa'a wa la yastakdimoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem in surah al-a'raf, he says, then if there or, or when their their appointed time it comes, they won't be able to postpone it. Nor will they be able to make it uh, proceed. They, they that they will not be able to uh, prevent the hour being established. Nor will they be able to bring it forward. All of this el. Ilm al ghayb this is ilm al ghayb this is knowledge of the unseen and is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, this knowledge, he was not given. He was only given those signs of the day of judgment. But even the hour and all of the other aspects of when he would die and when and our tafasil and even the tafasil, the details regarding his life and death, he was only given so much of this knowledge, but he didn't know the unseen, 
This is only ilm. Ilm al ghaib This is ilm. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fikitab al kareem وَعِنْدُهُ مَفَاتِيحِ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al kareem which affirms for us that this knowledge is with him and him alone, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's why we call it ilm, ilm al-ghayb. It's knowledge of the unseen, but with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is fully, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware and, and, and has full knowledge. But for us, it's ghayb. We don't know. It's unknown to us. We only know to believe uh, in that which was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this uh, verse, and with him is the keys to the unseen. And no one knows it except him. No one has this knowledge except him. Illa huwa, except him. Meaning, this ilm al ghayb is with Allah Azza wa Jal only. No one else has this, uh, has this knowledge. And no one can determine the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all with Allah Azza wa Jal. And in this regard, we also have to keep in mind something very important that a part of that journey after death, there are stages after we die. And that first part of that journey is entering into Al Barzakh. And this is not, this is, we have limited knowledge, our knowledge of Al Barzakh only comes from that which was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu in the Qur'an. And that was which was authenticated in his Sunnah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the knowledge that he was given. And again, as I said, it's limited knowledge. It was knowledge that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gave him, but it wasn't, it's not knowledge that he was able to attain on his own or from his own merit. It's only from Allah wa Jal, Tabarak Wa Ta'ala. Unlike some of the sects in Islam, for example, the most extreme, the Rathada, Shia, those who make takfir of the Sahaba, those who curse and believe they are drawing nearer to Allah, or they believe they are drawing nearer to Ali, radiallahu ta'anhu, that they believe that he has some divinity and he is free from that and free from their claims. That they believe that their imams, their a'imma, have knowledge of the unseen. And they believe that their imams have a higher station than the prophets alayhim afdal salatu was salam and that they're closer to Allah, meaning they're imams, and that their imams are closer to Allah than the angels. So this shows you how the people of Bid'ah and misguidance, how they become deceived by the, sh the shaitan and their hawa, and they begin to shape their creed in accordance with their desires, negating what doesn't appeal to them in the book of Allah and in the case of the Rafida, the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they have their own books. So they can say and believe in accordance with what fits with their desires. And there is a, a statement that one of their imams who died, Imam Khomeini, who mentioned, he said, Madhabana, he said, this is our madhab, our way, our path, is that the uh, imams, our imams, uh, imitana, that they have uh, uh, a manazil, uh, their, their level, their, it is higher in status 
than the Malaika, which are near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the Anbiya, those who were revealed the messages, uh, the, 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 you know, the messengers, alayhim afdal salatu salam. And in this statement is implied that their imams have even a higher station than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It's not sufficient enough kufr for them to say this about the rest of the Anbiya. But in fact, the statement seems to suggest and be very clear, in fact, that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is included in that. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ كُفْرٍ وَالْضَلَالِ May Allah protect us from disbelief and dalal. And so, in this stage of Al-Barzakh, as we mentioned, this is the time of the grave. So once we die, we become inhabitants of the grave. And there are many authentic hadith of the Prophet wasallam which are clear and affirm the adab al-qabr, the punishment of the grave, or the na'im al-qabr, or the, the uh, pleasures of the grave, or the, the comfort of the grave. Because we wish and we hope for comfort in our graves. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And one of those ahadith is a hadith uh, narrated in Bukhari, the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala. He said, Allah's pos- uh, apostle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Allah's slave is put in his grave and his companions return, and he even hears their footsteps. Two angels, two angels come to him and make him sit and ask. So the people will be asked, they will sat up in their grave. What did you used to say about this man? Meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The faithful believer will say, I testify that he is Allah's slave and apostle. Then they will say, they will say to him, look at your place in the hellfire. Allah has given you a place in paradise instead of it. So he will see both places. And Qatada, one of the narrators said, we were informed that his grave would be made spacious. Then Qatada went back to the narration of Ennis who said, whereas a hypocrite or a non-believer will be asked, what did you used to say about this man? He will reply, I don't know, but I used to say what the people used to say. So they will say to him, neither did you know, nor did you take the guidance by reciting the Quran. Then he will be hit with iron hammers. What? That he will make, he will cry out so loudly as everything near to him will hear except jinns and human beings. And this is in Bukhari. Ahabat Tifillah, this is one of those ahadith which are very clear in what will take place in Al Barzakh, in the grave. And that this is a marhala, this is a stage in which we all will pass. And there are many other authentic hadith which illustrate for us that there is a punishment in the grave and that we will be tried and tested and we will be asked three things. Men rabbuk, ma dinuk, men nabiyuk. That we will be asked these three questions in the grave. So these are some of the most important questions to make sure we're grounded in. And that is, who is your Lord? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is your prophet? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is your religion? Your religion is Islam. So that means we need al nafiyah And we need to practice that knowledge. We need al and we need to practice that knowledge. So that way, when it is our turn to inhabit those graves and enter al-barzakh, that will be of those who are successful. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil 
وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد